library and check out what you want. Check out
Let me kill him, because if not, he's going to kill you. Of course, he had Elijah not let him be, and Israel killed him. So now, what happens to Hannah and all these people, they're in fear, man, that and Nebuchadnezzar is going to come back and wipe them out, right? So they're running. And that's where we get into chapter 42. And just heads up, they already have plans of going to, back to Egypt. Right? And all the captains of the forces. Captains of the forces of Johan, the son of Korea, Jezaniah, the son of Hoshiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest came here and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Please let our petition be acceptable to you and pray for us to the Lord your God. For all this remnant, since we are left but a few, many as you can see, that the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the things we should do. So they go to Jeremiah and they, they ask him, Hey, Pray for us, right? Pray for us to you. Then they say, pray to us your God, man, that he'll show us what we should do, where we should go. And then they say, whatever God says, good or bad, bad or good, we'll do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God according to the words, and it shall be. And it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare it to you, and I will keep nothing back from you. So they said to, so they said to Jeremiah, Let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God sends us by you, whether it's pleasing or displeasing, we will obey the voice of the Lord your God, our God, to whom we send send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord your God. How many times, man, when trouble strikes us, we go running to the Lord. God, man, just get me out of this. Lord, help me, man. When I read this, it kind of reminded me, man, I used to be busted all the time, but it reminded me, I used to see all the guys in there, they'd be fighting their case, and you'd see them start opening their Bibles. I had a selling one time, every time he was going to go to court, three days before he started reading the Bible, so I knew when he was going to go to court every time. <laughs> <laughs> and then they put on, you know, his little rosary, and he put lips all the time. But how many times, man, when we're doing bad, do we go to the Lord? Lord, help me. Knowing that we're not going to walk in his way, man. Sorry, I can't. And it happened after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. You see, it took 10 days not to even get word back. But sometimes God delays the answer to prayers, man, that he may give more. Mm -hmm. I believe he wanted these people to think about what they asked for. <laughs> then he called Johanna, the son of Korea, all the captains of the forces of which were with him. And all the people from the least to the greatest have said to them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent to present your petition before him. If you will still remain in this land, then I will build you up and not pluck and pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. The Lord tells him, man, if you stay put right here, I will prosper you. And then the Lord says in the and the King James it says, the Lord says, I will repent. That's not what it means when the Lord says he needs to repent. All he's saying is, I will turn back the judgment that I put upon your people. I will pull it, right? Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord. For I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. I will show you mercy, that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land. The Lord gives his plan right there. The Lord is telling Jeremiah, look man, you stay here, I'll prosper you. I'll change everything. I'll build you up. I'll make your life known. But 
if you say we will not dwell in this land and disobey the voice of the Lord your God, say no, but we will go to the land of Egypt where we shall see no war, hear the sound of the trumpet, nor be hungry for bread, and there we will dwell. Then hear now the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, God of Israel. If you wholly set your face towards to enter Egypt and go to dwell there, then it shall be that the sword which you fear shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. The famine of which you were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there you shall die. So shall it be with all the men who set their faces to go to Egypt to dwell there. They shall die by the sword, by famine, by pestilence, pestilence is disease, right? And none of them shall remain or escape from the disaster that I will bring upon you. So the Lord tells them the good, and now he's giving them the bad. It's your choice. And little do they forget how long ago when the, when the Lord took them out of Egypt. Right? All the mighty things that he, that he showed in Egypt, man, that he opposed Pharaoh, right? Every, you got to understand, man, that every, every plague, right? Because they believed in the sun, God, God, God brought the darkness, right? Showing that their so-called gods had no power over the one true God. And God miraculously split at the sea, bam, brings them out. Just like God Almighty took you out of your, whatever you were into. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my fury will be poured out on you when you enter Egypt, and shall be an oath and astonishment, a curse and a reproach, and you shall see this place. No more. It's time. If you go to Egypt, you're never coming back. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people they come to the Lord, the Lord cleans them up, they start walking. <laughs> Whatever happens, they go back one more time, thinking, oh man, you know what? I'll repent, man. I'll just And they don't see that day. You know how many people I know that old deep, man? And they don't see another day. They don't get another chance, man. Right. Roll the dice and that's it. Yep. You know, since I came here, when I came here, I was messed up. I came here strung out. I remember like my first week of orientation, Coach and Zach, they came in because I was sick. I, I was kicking. And I felt like the exorcist and they laid hands on me back. <laughs> 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 I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was going to leave me, right? But they were praying for what was to come. And, um, man, <clears throat> the Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. Now, certainly that I have a monastery this day for you. Ready? Check this out, man. The Lord's speaking through Jeremiah. He already knows what's here. That's one thing we cannot hide, man, what we're really going to do from the Lord. You can fool everybody. You can fool your, your old lady. You can fool your man. You can fool your yeah. kids. You can fool your Everybody but the Lord knows. So the Lord speaks to them and watch what Jeremiah tells them, man. The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt, knowing certainly that I have a monster to this day. For you were hypocrites in your hearts when I sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us to the Lord our God, according to all the Lord our God says, so declare to us, and we will do it. And that was me, man, right? I stick, man, I'm giving my life to my mom, my tia, and, and you know what I mean, my kids, oh man. And I knew in my heart that I was not a Christian, man. I would be like, man, I'm, man, I am not serving the Lord for sure. And I'd be man. still doing little things, right? And I would still be the same old person, right? 50 50. And, you know, let me tell you something. Satan does not care if you're a Christian. If you are a so-called Christian, he don't care if you go and you hear the music at church and you're praising the Lord, jumping up and down. He don't care as long as you're harmed. Right? right. Satan does not care, man. If he knows that you're still 50-50, because he knows where you're really going. Go ahead and serve the Lord like that. Ooh, you'll leave you alone. And I have to and I have this day declared to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God or anything which he has sent you by me. Now therefore know, cer know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place where you desire to go as well. And sure enough, you go to chapter 43, you know what they tell Jeremiah? You're lying. 
<laughs> You're a liar. God didn't say that because they heard what they didn't want to hear. Yeah. So then they go. Oh no. And they actually do take up and they go to they go to Egypt for sure. For sure. I just, want to, I just want to show you what God speaks to Jeremiah when he did over there. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will set my face against you for evil and to cut off all Judah. Mm. And that's exactly what happened, brother. Brothers and sisters, now, these people did not obey. And this is a sad thing, right? Because you see three things that are happening here. Fear struck these people. Fear, a lack of faith, and a total disobedience to the voice of God. Yeah, amen. <clears throat> they do not listen, man. And so they go to Egypt trying to escape what they think they had coming over there, and it strikes them over there. Yeah. If they would have just listened to the word of God and stayed right there, the Lord would have prospered. Mm -hmm. Since they don't work on everything as they have passion on you, right? And then, I'm just going to go one more time. We'll go to Hebrews 10, 26 real quick. For if we sin willfully, as we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice for sin, but serve fearful living for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall be if I were to have to say, speaking to Christians right there, ones that have come to his knowledge and go ahead and live the same old way, yeah. it is not good, brothers, it's not good, sisters. And so that's why I spoke about that in my testimony, because I was trying to get to the point where that's how I lived my life, right? You know, I've been through a lot of my life. I've been through a lot of my life, and I've been forgiven much in my life. And now I thank God for all that because that's what brought me to Him, right? Yeah. I remember sitting there on the corner right there, selling my little drugs. And by the way, let me tell you something. Since I'm speaking about, I was the worst drug dealer ever. Come on. I was my biggest client. I was the best to myself. I was scared to death to old demon man because I didn't want to go to hell because I always knew the truth, right? And um and I remember one day man I was just I had to do this no more man. My kids man my older daughter she used to live down the street and when her and her husband used to come drive me down the street I used to hide. You know what I mean? That's so when I came here man I came here all messed up but I, I didn't know one thing I didn't come here for substance abuse. I didn't come here because I was homeless. I didn't come here for none of that. I came here strictly for the Lord. Yeah. And God went to work immediately. I'm up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I came here, I had uh, I had hepatitis C stage four, right? And uh, so then I go to the doctor man and, and they give me the medication. And the, and then they did an ultrasound, right? Well, they did some they did some tests on me. So the doctor tells me, hey, look, guys, this medication right here will cure you for sure. He says, but look, man, if you've had this so long that there's major liver damage and we're just afraid that you're gonna end up getting tumors. And then he leaves the room, and I remember I was like, oh, man, whatever. You know what I mean? It's time to go, it's time to go, man, right? And then, so anyways, they, I go and I do an ultrasound, and I don't hear nothing for like two, three months. I go back to the doctor, and he comes in, he goes, hey, Mr. Perez, hey, congratulations. You no longer have hepatitis C. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and this is a doctor saying, but what's amazing, 
He goes, I look, we looked at your, uh, your ultrasound things, your pictures, and he goes, and what we thought what, that it was is not there, man. He goes, there's some scarring, but he goes, you don't have to worry about anything. So see, not only did God clean me up, and I used to try to go to detox, I tried to go to AA. One time I went to this AA program, right? And the students taking, taking my intake, I took a little bag, a North Gate bag full of dirty clothes and my Bible, right? And I get there and I'm sitting down, this dude's doing my intake and he goes, hey, he goes, hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you're a religious guy, man, but you're going to have to put that Bible aside, pick up your big book, and get with your 12 steps. I ain't disrespect him or nothing. I got my Bible, I got my bag, and I split. Even in that condition, I was not going to let anybody disrespect my God. <laughs>